Thank you, Parag. And uh, infection probably seems to be the most dreaded of our problems. And the incidence, fortunately, if you look at situations when you're doing just a simple arthroscopy, luckily is between somewhere between 0.03 to 0.3%. And the variation in these can be from very simple superficial skin infections to even deep-seated septic arthritis. Unfortunately, when we look at the same situation after ligament or implant surgery, this will definitely rise to almost about 1%. And if we don't treat them in time, you're going to have problems of uh, movement as well as problems with chondral damage and arthritis. So the sequelae essentially that we are really concerned about, especially after ACL surgery, are going to be those of stiffness, contractures, muscle loss, muscle weakness, muscle atrophy, and of course, of chondral damage and arthritis. So the main causes why you would get an infection after an ACL reconstruction would be if that particular sort of individual, say he's a sportsman, he's had a steroid shot, uh, you know, just to try and take him through the season. And then, you know, someone goes in and does a surgery on him just after the season. Or if there's improper sterilization, you know, the OR environment is not that clean. If you've got skin lesions and if you have supracutaneous sutures, all of them are very important causes. Steroids essentially have a very strong association. And it's uh, important that if you have had a steroid injection, then you have a slightly higher risk of getting an infection as high as 0.6 to 1% at three and six months which has been sort of published in this large Medicare population study uh, almost about five years ago. So steroid injections, if you have a patient who's had a steroid shot, make sure that you don't offer him surgery ASAP and then wait for a while and then do the surgery. There's been a lot of debate on what should be the best way to sterilize. In my practice, we do a plasma sterilization, which I feel is the standard of care as of today. Uh, I, we should shy away from using formalin chambers or using, uh, you should, we should use activated side solution with a lot of care. It has to be essentially marked properly and the soakage has to be followed right down to the T so as to say. Sterile plastic camera covers can be used, but in a very interesting study that was published from the Singapore General Hospital, they looked at these camera covers at the end of the surgical procedure and almost about 70% of them had small punctures, which means that at the end of your arthroscopy, probably three out of four times, you have violated the sterility by using a so-called sterile camera cover, and that gave you a false sense of security. These ACL infections will present, almost one in four will present within the first two to three days. These are usually because of staph aureus. They will present any with the standard way which an infection would present with knee pain, swelling, warmth, and all this classic signs of inflammation about three out of four will present in an insidious fashion, maybe around two weeks following the date of surgery. And they usually have subacute pain, swelling, maybe treated initially just with some NSAIDs and you know, that may mask their clinical presentation. And usually the organism in them is going to be CNS or coagulase negative staphylococci. As Andy went through his uh, sort of repertoire or his algorithm of, infection, of, of investigations, Pull out the presence of infection probably is the first thing one would want to do and in, in essential to getting total blood counts and ESRs and a CRP titer, you want to aspirate the synovial fluid, which I feel is pretty important. So synovial fluid aspiration, I think, is a very important aspect and that has to be done really properly. So what are the criteria that we used and we looked at this publication? We were also a part of the infection consensus meeting, which was held in Philadelphia in 2018, where uh, I was a part of the sports group. And the criteria, which will now get published in the next couple of days, will be there for you to see. But these are the criteria which, uh, which should be used for aspiration. If you have a positive culture on your aspirate, if you have a purulent aspirate, if your cell count is more than 100,000, if you have more than 90% PMNs, then that would be a diagnostic for an infection. If you have an aspirate that looks turbid, which has a cell count, which is between 20,000 to 100,000, a PMN count, which is between 75 to 90%, if the glucose of your synovial fluid is around 50% of that of the serum level, 
that is highly suspicious. If your CRP is more than 150 at day three, that suggests an acute infection. If it's more than 20 at the third week, again, you should be suspecting an infection and looking out for the same. The treatment is pretty straightforward. You should not be wasting much time and you should do an immediate arthroscopic washout. If you're able to catch the infection within 24 hours of its starting, you can aim and hope for at least more than 90% cure rates, which is really, really important. And this has to be followed by an appropriate course of antibiotics and you should have ideally an infection disease consultant to help you within the same. When you surgically debride all these knees, we prefer to do an arthroscopic uh, type of debrima, essentially because the morbidity associated with an open arthrotomy is quite more. You got to send fluid for all cell counts and cultures. You need to culture aerobic, anaerobic, and if you suspect mycobacteria or fungal cultures as well, your cyanobectomy should be complete. You should be looking at the suprapatellar pouch or both the gutters, and you should go to the back of the knee and do the posterolateral and the posteromedial recess as well. You have to irrigate with at least about 10 liters of normal saline, and you should be putting drains at the end of the procedure. Arthroscopically, you can stage your septic arthritis into stages. Essentially, I mean, that's something that we all will look at. But the key to remember is that in the first three stages where it is slowly affecting and infiltrating the synovium and leading to infective synovitis, your excess will be normal. And only when it reaches the stage four would you start getting bone erosions and cysts. And that represents a chronic infection. So here we have a case of a 34 year old male who has a two week history of an ACL done elsewhere. He presents with fever and swelling. He was aspirated at uh, the index place where he had the surgery. He's also uh, had oral antibiotics, which was upgraded and is, he was not settling down. And what he actually required was an arthroscopic synovectomy and complete clearance of all his hardware and even takedown of his graph. So essentially I've put up this case to show that you should not be waiting that late. If this guy had an early washout as early as maybe uh, you know within 24 hours, then his knee could have definitely been saved. So what does data tell us? Data tells us that if you go in early, you have a higher chance of retaining your graft. If you go in late, then you are able to retain grafts in about 77% of all people. If you do your procedures correctly, then you will have no reinfections and you will have a very good outcome and the last thing that you want to do is that you should not be hard and fast to retain your graft if you find that your first arthroscopic washout has not got the right results you should go in do a second procedure get rid of all the hardware get rid of your graft as well so this was how he was at the end of six months following his uh, arthroscopic debridement he has got a knee that is quiet He's got a lax knee because I've got rid of all his hardware and his graft as well. And he seems to be quite content and does not want to have a second procedure in spite of having a knee that is clinically lax, but he does not feel instability in his activities of daily living. So he's modified his lifestyle now, does not want to go back to physical activity and he seems pretty happy with his result. The controversies that we all sort of get to talk about is should we aspirate repeatedly? I think there is no role of doing repeated aspirations. If you aspirate once, you find you should go and wash it out. There's no point in keeping on aspirating and covering up with antibiotics. Open arthrotomy or arthroscopy, similar cure rates, but obviously the mobility is more with an open arthrotomy. Suction irrigation is an absolute no-no because it sort of uh, establishes a fluid highway where you're putting in and circulating bad fluid which really does not work too well. Females are less likely to be infected, which uh, was discussed previously. Hamstrings are more likely to have uh, or get infected. If you're younger and if you are on immunosuppressants, you're more likely to get infected. So the incidence, as I did say, is going to be around 0.5 to 1% and average of 1.92 procedures per patient are to be considered. The real question is that do you retain your graft or do you sacrifice your graft? 
and i think this all depends upon how early you go in and if your graft looks viable if the tension on your graft looks good and if your knee feels stable then you can retain your graft especially if you've done it in the acute situation if your graft looks non viable if it looks lax your knee is unstable then i don't see any reason to retain the graft and i would sacrifice those grafts in these instances so how will i prevent it i think we have good guidelines now the first is that you have to maximize the host by ensuring that he stops smoking you've got good diabetic control and you clip the hair of the skin don't shave it off and you of course want to minimize the bacterial load by giving a chlorhexidine soap wash to these patients pre surgery using an alcohol based chlorhexidine skin solution during surgery use prophylactic antibiotics and of course have meticulous soft tissue handling and closure techniques which will help the vancomycin antibiotic soaked wrap is a very good way to minimize infections and essentially how do you make this antibiotic wrap you take about 500 mg of vancomycin powder you dissolve it in 100 ml of normal saline and then you soak your gauze piece and you wrap it around your graft while the tunnels are being prepared so your average amount of fluid that your standard gauze piece is going to hold is going to be about 7 ml and that will give you around 35 mg of vancomycin within it which is completely safe because this will not be toxic for your graft it will not be toxic for your cartilage as well vancomycin is preferred because it has a low allergy rate and it is less toxic than tobra genta or kefazolin and essentially by soaking the graft you're changing it from a piece of dead tissue to now an antibiotic delivery system which really works in the long run i looked at my personal data over the last 20 years of uh, doing acl surgery and essentially what i did find that the incidence of my own infections has gone down over the last 6 years after i've started using vancomycin so grafts in my practice so i think the uh, i would like to conclude by saying that we as surgeons have the responsibility to prevent infections and i think uh, the onus is on us by taking care of all the proper mechanisms and modalities to stop infection thank you very much mm -hmm.